The biggest mistake many middle school ELA teachers make is doing a lesson or an activity one time and then moving on to the next lesson. You spend all the time planning and preparing an activity and you dedicate 25 minutes of class time to it and then it's done for the year. It's crazy, right? What you don't want to do is fall into the trap of teaching something one time, giving students a practice activity that goes along with it, and then moving on to the next topic you need to cover. You're making your life so much harder than it needs to be. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you an ELA game that you can use three different ways and with a multitude of topics, and it's called Spoons. Maybe you've heard of it before. Then I'm going to share a whole bunch of ideas for how you can rinse and repeat the game in your classroom. But before I do that, be sure to hit subscribe where you're watching this video for more videos like this. Okay, so let's look at the first way you can use the game Spoons in your ELA class. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this first example of Spoons is through the lens of a figurative language game but it can be used with so many different topics and I'm gonna give you examples of those as well. So I want you to imagine that you want your students to learn figurative language definitions and be able to identify examples of figurative language when they see them in the text, etc. So here's how you would set up this game with your students to equip them with that knowledge. So the first thing that you get to do is you get to prepare the playing cards for this activity. So in order to make the cards for a game of spoons, you need to create a deck of 52 cards that relate to the ELA topic that you want to cover, in this case, figurative language. So on each of the 52 cards, you will want to have either a type of figurative language, a definition, an example containing that type of figurative language, or another example card. So it may be easiest to think of like 13 types of figurative language and then come up with cards for that type of figurative language. So for example, you could choose alliteration, hyperbole, metaphor, simile, personification, symbolism, assonance, cliche, idiom, onomatopoeia, illusion, oxymoron, puns. Get the idea, right? Each of those gets written on a card. So then you will come up with a definition for each of those and place all of those definitions on 13 cards. Then finally, you'll create 26 more cards with an example on each type of figurative language card. So then you'll print out all of these cards. You'll make multiple copies of each full deck so you have them on hand for the games to play during the year. And then it's time to play. And so if that sounds like a lot, I want you to remember that you're doing this once and that's it. And you're gonna use it year after year, time and time again. And you can even honestly have your students help you do it to be quite frank. All right, let's talk about how to play the game. The students will sit in a small circle with the spoons in the center. You'll have one fewer spoon than there are players in the group. You can also use markers or whatever you have on hand in place of spoons. If you don't have spoons, it's totally fine. So then you'll shuffle the playing cards and you'll deal four cards to each player. Then you'll form a stack in the middle with the remaining cards. So the first player takes a card from the stack and places it into their hand. They will decide whether to keep that card or not. Then they quickly discard one card from their hand and pass it face down to the next person in the circle. So you're going clockwise. And the goal is to try to get four of a kind of any type of figurative language in your hand. So once a person gets four cards representing the same type of figurative language, they can grab a spoon from the middle. Then once a player takes a spoon from the middle, the rest of the players can now grab a spoon, even if they don't have four cards representing a particular type of figurative language, because that one student pulled it, everybody else does too. So the player who grabbed the first spoon needs to show their cards to the group so that they can all agree that it is correct figurative language match, right? You can also have an answer key if there are any disagreements, etc. And in order not to lose, students must grab a spoon in time. So the last player, the one who is not successful in grabbing a spoon is eliminated, right? That's why there are less one less spoon than there are students, kind of like um, musical chairs. Then you will decrease the number of spoons by one and you will repeat that process until there's only one player left. Spoons works great as a game for small groups. You can just make multiple copies of the cards. You know, some ideas are to set up small groups around the classroom and have all groups play at the same time. You can also use it for early finishers as a review before a test, as an activity when you have like an extra 20 minutes and don't want to start a new lesson. You can even use it as an easy activity when you have a sub. And so if you're hearing this and you're like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot of prep up front. Again, I want you to keep in mind that students can and should play these games more than once during the year. 
you laminate the cards, you put in the work one time, and then you can use it for years to come. And again, have students help you. And I want you to think about it this way too. When you cook dinner for your family and they enjoy it, do you cook that meal one time and like mm, never cook it again? Of course not, right? Or when you discover that there is this store in town, you find a great outfit that you feel confident in and you're like, oh, I love that store. Do you never go back again? Of course not, right? You want to do the same thing with your planning. You don't want to be doing, you know, one great lesson one time in the classroom. So if you continue to just do one activity in your classroom before moving on to the next, then you're always going to feel like you're trying to catch up, right? Rush to try to fit everything in, even though your students aren't really mastering those standards. And I want you to imagine, you know, how great it will feel when you can just quickly pencil in your plans that you're playing that game again, right? You prep it once, you use it throughout the unit or the school year, that's gonna save you so much time with your planning. And I'm willing to bet that once you see the benefits of rinsing and repeating lessons for both you and your students, you are going to be hooked, right? You're gonna start looking at all of your activities and even assignments through a new lens. You know, your one pagers, your Socratic seminars, your silent debates, graphic essays, you know, essays, et cetera, all that stuff. You're gonna start asking yourself, where in my plans can I repeat this activity? It's so, so powerful. Okay, so now I wanna look at some other ways that you can take the same spoons game and use it with other ELA topics. So you can use it with a types of sentences game. So if you're teaching the four types of sentences, simple, compound, complex, compound, complex, you can easily turn that into a spoons game, right? You already have your four categories. Now you come up with definitions and examples for each category. So for example, for simple sentences, you'd need a total of 13 cards. One can simply say simple sentence. Another can be a definition. Another can be a definition written in a different way. And the rest can be example sentences. And you would simply do that same for each of the other categories until you make a full deck of 52 cards. And again, I wanna give you a time-saving hack here to make this really easy on yourself. And if you're just using it for use in your classroom, you can totally copy the sentences straight from a grammar book or a workbook that you already have. Like don't reinvent the wheel. And this is gonna save you time coming up with examples. It's gonna turn that boring worksheet to an interactive game. It like changes the name of the game in your classroom. Another way that you can use a spoons game in your classroom is to review parts of an essay. So if you teach our EBW approach and you wanna help students internalize all of the parts of the EBW framework or any other writing framework that you use, you could make cards for tag, for summary, claim, premise, intro to evidence, evidence, justification, restatement of claims, summary of evidence, and that mic drop sentence. So all the parts of the framework. And then again, each of those words goes on a card. Their definitions goes on another and examples go on more cards. And you can even just take a response to literature that you or a student has already written. And with a few small adjustments, those sentences from the essay become your sample sentences for the game. It's so easy to take something you already have and make it interactive for your students. Some other topics to try with spoons might be verb tenses, pronouns in the proper case, so subjective, objective, possessive. You could do verbals, including gerunds, participles, infinitives, um, plot structure cards, right? For exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. You can even do it with vocabulary words. Write a card for the word, a definition, a card with a synonym for the vocab word. You could have a simple fill in the blank sentence where the word logically fits, right? Whatever it might be. And again, remember that once you put in the time up front to create these games, they're done and can be used over and over again. Plus on the days when your students play them, you get a break from standing in front of the class and teaching and your students get to take ownership over their own learning. So if you haven't tried rinsing and repeating lessons and activities yet, I encourage you to give it a try and see the positive results in your own classroom. All right, hopefully you found this helpful. Make sure that you subscribe where you are watching this video for more like this.